let's go ahead and start. Um, it's 9.09 .09 by my computer's um, account. I'm going to go ahead and do a call to order. Um, and, and we're all here. It's great to see everyone. Um, have you all had a chance to look at your um, packets and um, look at the meeting, the minutes from the previous meeting? By shaking of the heads, um, I, uh, that's 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 true. So basically, that um, that's that's the other thing that I'm do, going to do a clarification real quickly um, from speaking with Kathy, and she's talked to the city clerk. We're doing an, an abbreviated version of um, parliamentary procedure. So I was doing the strict fallout. We do everything. Um, so we're going to do an abbreviated version from now on um, where um, we'll just do a, a vote on um, any any agenda items that we need to add, um, approval of, of minutes and, and that kind of thing. So we'll only do, be doing votes and approval of the minutes and the house manager's reports. So I'll be calling for votes on both of those. And then we'll go through um, the uh, agenda items as quickly as possible. And then unless we have any um, motions or um, added items that we need to add to the agenda, we will only do votes on those and then we'll um, do a vote for an, an adjournment. So um, if that's, do you guys understand what I'm saying? Am I clearly articulating yes. that? Okay, so this way the meeting will go much quicker and hopefully, um, We'll go from there. So um, looking at the minutes and if everybody's had a chance to review those minutes, um, I am going to call for a motion for approval. Of Maureen, you just froze. <clears throat> In the world. Okay, am I okay now? Yes. Okay, so re-clarification. Thank you, Kathy, for telling me that. These are going to be fun meetings, obviously. So um, I need. I am gonna be calling for a motion um, for approval of the board minutes of January 13th. Um, if I can get a motion from somebody and somebody needs to unmike and put forth a motion. I move that we accept the minutes from uh, January 13th, 2021. Thank you, Connie. Can I get a second, please? Connie, would you on mic and just say yes? Usually down on the bottom. Yes. Well, mine's at the top. <laughs> That's why okay. I was confused. <laughs> I second. <laughs> All right, thank you. So it's been moved and seconded um, mm -hmm. that we approve the minutes from the board meeting because we are being filmed. If we can just do a hands of approval for a vote that for all approving of the of the board minutes of January 13th, 2021. Perfect. Okay. Great, moving right along. That was a, a full compliance that everybody agreed with those. Um, moving straight to, to the house manager's report. Kathy, if you would please start, that would be great. Absolutely. Um, we, we have been very quiet, as you can see from the, uh, the number of events between January and March. Uh, because of COVID, obviously, we're not having any events, but we did... Uh, have 10 tours and one board meeting. I did count the board meeting that we did in January. So we've had a total of 43 guests in, um, in 10 tours and um, the garden is still being used a lot for photographs, but because we're not there all the time, it, even when we're there, it's hard to capture, but when we're not there, it's impossible to capture you know, how much use it's actually getting. But um, I know they're doing it. I saw some beautiful little girls in dance outfits getting their pictures taken on Saturday, so it was it was kind of fun. Um, our inquiry, inquiries are still tracking to previous years. Um, we've had uh, 92 inquiries since the beginning of the year. Um, eight of those have come in through phone and 84 have been electronic. 
Um, we are getting um, more inquiries from them not than anybody else. Um, but um, Wedding Wire and the City of Longmont websites are right behind there. And we also have a new um, source of um, inquiries, which is a, a small company in Denver called Venue Hub. Um, who's actively working to um, reroute um, postponed COVID events. So um, we started to get some inquiries from them as well. You can see that they, um, they met and matched the City of Longmont website inquiries for January through March. Uh, we have four new uh, revenue generating events and it was kind of tricky counting because we've had uh, events book and then cancel as well. So I just, did the best I could based on um, my, my assumption that we only wanted to know about things that were still on the books. Um, so we now have a total of nine revenue events booked um, for 2021. Um, the really good news, um, Pat Neff is gonna continue to do our custodial. Um, I don't believe that Rhonda is coming back. Um, Pat um, is doing a phenomenal job. If we leave him a list, he does the whole list and then he adds to it. Um, and right now he is working at um, systematically moving through all of the rooms, boiling all the wood and, and he's having fun. <laughs> so, and it's really hard work. So um, he, he is coming on Thursdays. He's staying um, a, a large portion of the day instead of the three hours that we were used to getting from Rhonda. And he is willing to do anything we need him to do. So I am so jazzed that we've, you know, that we've got somebody who's willing and capable and happily um, doing um, everything he can to make the house um, beautiful and ready to open. That's so um, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, and since they're adding another custodian to recreation, um, I, think, I think I've been told that, that that's gonna continue for the foreseeable future. Thank you, Sue Ellen. Um, so I'm really, I'm really jazzed about that. And he is, he is so tickled to show up on Thursdays and uh, make a pot of coffee and go to work. So it's, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. Um, the garden is uh, going gangbusters. Um, we are uh, doing tons of things to get ready for the summer. Um, both Grow and TerraCare have been out. Uh, grow has been out at least three times already. Um, they've both done a leaf cleanup and um, Grow is now um, trimming bushes and weeding uh, to get ready for the <clears throat> the planting, which will be the third week in May. Um, they're also um, remulching all of the perennial beds um, so that we get a leg up on that as well. So um, that's pretty exciting. Um, TerraCare has aerated. They've done a leaf cleanup. I'm pretty sure they fertilized the day they aerated. And the other good news is I talked Parks into um, doing a pre-emergent again this year. They haven't done one for about three years. And we've been um, increasingly getting more, more and more crabgrass um, in our grass, especially in the um, boulevards on the outside of the fence. And unfortunately, once it's out there, then it moves into the main part of the garden. So um, we're working on getting a pre-emergent laid down to um, stop the crabgrass. I'm excited about that too. Um, the use of the garden is picking up again. Um, there were people out there with lawn chairs in the sunshine last week. There was a uh, mother and a, a two dance daughters and a photographer. Um, there's lots of people walking through. It's always so exciting to me to, uh, to see people there. Um, my family had an egg hunt there on, on Easter morning and uh, the kids had a great time, even though frankly, the nothing's up higher than this much. So my seven-year-old grandson walked into the, uh, into the property and he looked around and he said, put his hands on his hips and he said, don't you think grandpa should have done a better job of hiding the eggs? <laughs> yeah. I, and we got it. We got a seven year old critique, but it was, uh, it was pretty, they had a great time. They hunted their eggs. It was over in like 15 minutes. And then they, um, and then they hid eggs. They picked out 10 eggs and they rehid them in the garden for two more hours. So they had a great time. Um, critique and all. Um, Good news, we're going to start um, letting the clubs return to the house with the proper safeguards. Um, if they are um, vaccinated, they can come back and they don't have to social distance. They do have to wear their masks um, until um, the city or and or the county lifts the mask mandate for indoors. Um, if they 
aren't vaccinated, then they can come back, but they will still have to social distance and wear their masks. So uh, I'm working on notifying each of them um, that they can come back and seeing if they actually want to do that at this point. Um, but that's that's really good news. It'll be the first time we've had people in the house to do something for a long, long time. Um, so that's exciting. Um, the repairs, we, we're uh, doing repairs on the kitchen hood. The um, carbon dioxide um, canister is expired and um, the new um, company that's doing the um, maintenance felt like that the nozzles needed to be moved a little bit. So we are in the process of getting that done. Uh, facilities approved it and they're paying for it, which is good news. And uh, they're gonna be in on the 19th to do that work. Um, Jacqueline is working on our biannual inventory and that's almost done. Um, we're down to the stuff that's hard because it moves around and changes. It was kind of funny. She came into my office yesterday and she wanted to know, um, she wanted to know about the linen inventory because she couldn't make any sense of it. And um, she's the one who did it two years ago. And, and I didn't review the linen inventory because to me, that's just kind of, you know, it, it changes all the time. So um, we sat for about 10 minutes and tried to figure out what she did two years ago and just decided she was going to redo it because it didn't make sense. So I told her to do it. So it made sense when she redid it in two more years. So uh, we're almost done with that. And that's uh, an exciting thing to have behind us because it's very tedious and time consuming. Um, I already talked about the clubs, so I'm going to move past that one. Um, uh, just kind of an update on the, um, the dial, and I think it's actually changed since I wrote the note yesterday or wrote the, the report yesterday. But as of yesterday, we were in yellow on the COVID dial. It looks to me like there is a very good chance that we're moving to blue with caveats um, shortly, but I don't know the exact um, nature of that. So. Um, at the moment, under yellow, we're, we're able to do um, events up to 50% of our capacity. And um, as long as we're willing to do masks and put six feet between the tables. Um, so um, we're working on getting that information out to the people that already have events booked and um, looking for ways to do that safely that makes sense so that um, as we do our bookings, we can tell people what the rules are at that moment in time and then just keep them informed as they change. Um, so my interpretation of that after consulting with Sue Ellen and Ben is that we can do um, up to 75 in the garden and um, 15 to 20 in the house, depending on if we use the upstairs or the downstairs. So some of our, um, some of our events still can't go forward inside because they're bigger than, than 15 or 20 guests. Um, that includes a couple of our clubs but, um, but we're, we're making progress and it's exciting. Um, and I'm in the process of um, getting more hand sanitizers so they can be like everywhere uh, and putting up a few signs about social distancing and mask wearing so that um, we're in compliance with all of the rules. Um, <coughs> um, I, pardon me? Kathy, I hate to interrupt, but I have some questions and, and I'm not sure how you would like to handle the questions. Would you like us to wait with your questions and completely until you're done with the report? Or do we want to take questions per um, your, your bullet items? You know, it would probably be easier just to jot them down and do them at the end because I've got quite a bit to get through and your questions might get answered. And if they don't, then we can do them at the end. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, I just wanted... I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. So, okay, thank you. Okay, that's fine. Um, I submitted the operating budget for 2022. It is budget season um, and I'm working on capital requests. I need to do um, what's called PB 145, which is kind of an ongoing um, capital request to purchase things like furniture that benefit customers. I'm working on that. And then in addition to the grant that we're working on, we're also going to put a capital request in the system to do the remainder of the items that are not in the, the current capital funding that we've already received. So I'm going to do a request um, for whatever we need in addition to what we've 
got for the driveway already and for the painting and, um, and for the, um, I think that's it. So we're, we're gonna go ahead and put a capital request in the system um, per um, Karen Roney's um, suggestion and Jeff's agreement um, so that we have a backup if the, if the grant requests or if, if the grant isn't approved. So um, I'm working on that as well. Um, we have some money this year um, out of the um, PB 145, which is the, um, the fund that we use to replace things that customers benefit from in the various facilities in the city. And um, we're gonna get a new stove. Our stove is in pretty crummy condition. Um, we were gonna do that last year and then the funding got cut off. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, we're all set for that from an installation perspective because we went ahead last year and installed a turnoff valve on the connection to the gas. So now all we have to do is um, pull out the old stove, put in the new stove and, and hook it up because um, before it was, it was wired directly into the gas and we couldn't do it without a plumber. So I'm working on that. Um, I also think we're gonna get a new um, refrigerator for um, alcohol and drink and food storage. Um, because we can't figure out how old that refrigerator that we have is. Um, it, it left, it was at the senior center for Meals on Wheels and they got a grant to get a new one and we took it and um, it's got another five or six years on it and uh, no idea when it's gonna conk out and we've got the dollars to replace it. So I think that we're gonna do that. And then if there's any money left over, we're gonna buy some additional folding chairs that match the ones that we use in the downstairs um, because they are still available. And something that I'm noticing is that um, a lot of the things that we're using are becoming not available anymore because people are not manufacturing them. And since we have such a huge investment in those um, cherry wood caned chairs, um, we're gonna go ahead and buy a few more so that we can keep using them for quite some time. Um, Karen and I are working on, Karen and Ann and I are still working on the grant submission. Karen's gonna give us an update on that in a little bit. And um, uh, just so you know, uh, before when we were doing this, the, the um, grant deadline had not been set. Um, the grant application is still not open. And, um, but the grant deadline is gonna be the 1st of August. And we are still waiting on quotes from most of the contractors that we've spoken with. Um, most of them are so busy that they can't seem to break free from their busy schedules and the work that they're already doing to give us a quote for work that we aren't going to do till 2022. Um, and the, the other thing we're really struggling with at the moment is um, what, what exactly are we going to do with the driveway? So, and I'll let Karen to talk to what, what we've um, figured out so far when we get to that um, portion of the meeting. Um, the, the other Good or bad news is that the grant process this year is going to be very, very competitive um, because most of their funding comes from the taxes off of gaming revenues. And of course, um, Central City and Black Hawk and um, the other gaming city, whatever that one is, had, you know, were closed most of last year. So their funds are, are fairly short. Although I skied a couple weeks ago, and if the traffic into Central City is in any indication, they are going gangbusters. Um, just another note, Jan, uh, Jacqueline and I are both scheduled to renew our CPR and first aid in May um, to keep up with our requirements um, for safety for the house. And um, I didn't put this in the note, but I also have to uh, renew my TIPS training in May, which is the um, training to serve alcohol responsibly. So I'm looking into getting signed up for a class. Um, event cancellations, uh, my June 19th wedding canceled. Um, they've been having a lot of um, health issues and they also um, are struggling because of COVID and they um, decided not to go forward. Um, Stephanie and Cove uh, booked and then they turned back around in about three weeks and canceled. Um, her family is Canadian. And um, based on the, uh, the rules about crossing the border and the um, pace at which the vaccinations are happening both here and there, um, they decided they just didn't wanna take a chance that their families couldn't be there when they got married, which makes perfect sense. Um, but we did um, schedule a very nice little lovely wedding ceremony for May 22nd. 
Um, we scheduled a, a lovely little 12 person uh, wedding, excuse me, wedding ceremony and dinner for um, 13th of June with a rehearsal on the 12th. Um, we just scheduled a 60th wedding anniversary for July. And of course, um, Stephanie and Cove have um, canceled, but we did go through all the motions and the invoices and the billing and the booking um, for their event. So I did put it on there as booked and then book and canceled. Um, we're, we're getting a ton of inquiries, but people are very, very cautious. Um, they really don't want to book and then cancel. Um, so they're all holding off to see what happens with COVID. Um, as I mentioned before, our leads are tracking very well to previous years, but um, people are just getting information and waiting. Uh, I did um, send a note and um, have a little conversation with uh, the Firehouse Art Gallery, who are the people who sponsor Art Walk. They are planning on doing the September event, um, which is going to look uh, pretty much like the old Art Walks. I think that's really good news. Um, at the moment, though, they don't really have a sponsorship that fits the same category as what we did. Their sponsorships are considerably more um, spendy than what we've done in the past. So I'm working, I'm going to have a conversation with her about whether or not they can open up um, a sponsorship like the one we had before. So I'm continuing to work on that. Um, wedding sites and services is starting to go back to. Um, to uh, shows, the shows are starting to gear up for the wedding shows. So I did get um, some leads in March and uh, sent out um, uh, no emails to all of them. And I just received another set that I'll send out uh, probably this evening. So they're starting to, um, to fire up. Um, moving on to the spreadsheet and the financials um, on, the, on the main sheet, which is the one um, with all of the months on it. Um, you can see that, we, that we're kind of holding our own financially so far this year. Um, we're about, we're about $1,000 in the red, which is not surprising at all at this time of year, even in a non-COVID year. So um, I'm not uh, disappointed in that at all. And I'm hoping as the bookings pick up that we'll, uh, we'll continue to, um, we'll get in the black and stay there this year. Um, but that all depends on what happens with COVID. Um, the next sheet is the event breakdown sheet. Um, and you can see that we've had um, a total of um, 12 events with 43 um, guests so far this year. And that includes um, the April events because that's a, a running total. Um, those are not represented on the uh, March or the report for today. So there was one more tour with three more guests. Um, the next three sheets are the expenses in January, February, and March. Um, I put those in there so you could see that we're not really um, spending much money. Um, most of what we're spending is um, to pay Jacqueline and for um, a few um, office supplies and also um, our, our current advertising. So I just wanted to put those in there so you could see what we were actually doing. Um, nothing too exciting. Um, <clears throat> but... I thought you might want to see exactly what we're, excuse me, I'm losing my voice, what we're spending money on. Um, so if you have any questions on those, you can ask them when we're done going through the stuff. <clears throat> I did also um, put together a revised um, 2020 financial sheet. It's still not final because the city hasn't completely closed the books for 2020. But um, you can see that we were, we, we were about $7,000 in the red last year, and that money will come out of the fund. Um, and the bulk of that was um, paying Jacqueline um, during, during COVID and keeping her employed. Um, we paid her um, pandemic leave, which meant that she didn't come to work um, up until um, June, and paid her her full wages um, of 12 hours a week. And then when she came back to work, we paid her six hours a week for the balance of the year. So that, that is um, the majority of the money we spent last year. And then in 2021, um, the next sheet is just a, a reiteration of what the spreadsheet says for 2021. Um, the next thing in the, um, 
Let me look at my, I'm going to, I'm going to leave off the electronic participation policy until we're ready to that agenda item. So that that's everything I've got um, for the manager's report. So um, Maureen, do you want to open it up for questions? Yes. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open up um, the, the manager's report for questions. Is there anybody that has any questions that they would like to ask Kathy in regards to this report? I do. Okay, just a couple, just a, a couple of questions um, on Jacqueline's uh, inventory. Does she need some help with that? I know we used we're, to help with the inventory. You know, we're almost done, Connie. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's been a really good way to keep her busy, sure. Because um, we don't we don't have until the clubs come back, we don't have as much work for her. So right. it, at this point, I'd say no, but we would welcome that help in the future, yeah. in two years. <laughs> so in two <laughs> years, if you want to raise your hand and volunteer, that would be amazing. <laughs> if I'm still on, <laughs> yes. Um, and then the other the other question I had was triggered by your egg hunt, Kathy. Um, I thought that would be a perfect little event to add on to offer in the, uh, as a city activity at the Callahan house for future reference, you know, around Easter time is doing an egg hunt. How fun <laughs> is that? <laughs> so just as I just stuck in my Head, I thought, well, maybe we can look at that sometime when we get back to whatever's normal. Yeah, yeah. the new normal, right? Yeah, the new normal. The new normal. I think that's a brilliant idea. Maybe we could consider looking at an Easter egg hunt um, slash tea or something along those lines um, to to be a, a spring fundraiser or, or yeah, whatever. yeah. That's what I was thinking too. Any more questions, Anne? I have one. Yeah. Um, just on the art walk, as far as uh, you said, it might be back to active again in September. Will the Callahan be part of that or is this art walk just downtown? No, I'm, I'm hoping to participate. Uh, okay. But we, it, and there could, there are two ways that we could participate. One would be as an official sponsor, if they'll create something that makes sense for us financially. And the other would be just to be open like we used to do <laughs> um, during Art Walk and, um, and make sure that people know that <clears throat> through social media and um, whatever other ways we wanna communicate it. Um, I, I think we could do it either way because I think we've built up enough of a following and enough people that know we're open <clears throat> that if we didn't um, find a financially appropriate sponsorship so that they would advertise for us, that we could still just plan to be open. Would we consider still hosting an art, an artist? I mean, yes. I am so disappointed, honestly. Um, and your idea with the dresses, the paper dresses, and everything like that. I'm so sad that we were not able to do that. I think that would have been a splendid event. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that they've even rescheduled anything like that or if we look at that I, we can have Jacqueline chase it she's the one that that came up with that idea and um, did all the communications on that so um, I think we should probably wait until June mid-June or early July to actually start booking artists um, until or at least until we have some clarity on uh, if it's really going to happen and then I, we can certainly have Jacqueline chase them to see if they if they've done something this year I agree. Um, we certainly don't want to have anybody booked and then disappoint people again. I, I um, don't want to put it off too, too far um, because people have been stuck at home for so long that um, I think they're jumping at the chance to, to book up their calendars and get doing things again. So um, yeah, I, I, I agree. We can wait until um, June, but um, if everybody can get their little thinking caps on and think of, of maybe a, a good local artist because I'm not so sure that, that I want to waste Jacqueline's time 
chasing that down yet because I really am not sure that that's occurring. Um, maybe we we'll just look at getting one or two local artists. Um, and well, and Ann, Ann does that. Um, she she takes suggestions, and then she pursues um, getting the um, the artists booked. And usually we have somewhere in the neighborhood of three or four, depending on how much space they want and what they're showing. And um, I'm assuming I'm I'm not volunteering you, Ann. I'm just assuming that you want to continue. So you might want to pipe in. And I, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. You're on mute. Yeah, I had remuted myself. Yeah, I still have. Uh, in fact, I was looking at my packages, you know, that I have on all the artists last night. So. So, so just for our clarification, so is Anne in charge of our walk? Is that something that's just a standard thing that she's been doing? Um, just she volunteered to do it. And she had a helper. Who is helping you, Anne? Yeah, what I usually. Uh, Shirley. Surely was. Okay. Um, I, I had yeah. also volunteered last year to, to help and had a couple of artists set up, um, Diane Wood and um, Leslie Capizzi um, as a, as a uh, jewelry artist. But, um, and then we canceled and I canceled with them. But I would love to do that again. Um, I, I was former director of the Longmont Council for the Arts. So I am really, I know a lot of the local artists in, in that regards. Yes. I, I, I would love to, to, to work with it on that, Anna, if you, if you would accept my help in regards to that. Sure. That's, sure. That's such a, what it does is, you know, it's more like I was a central point. I took suggestions and we tried to contact, but we didn't want everybody going out and promising artists that they could show and then have you know too many so we needed a central point oh that, but definitely definitely and so in other words um we'll not you know if you want to talk to artists and say that there's a possibility you could show you know or we're looking for it but don't say here you have a spot because you don't know what somebody else has been talking about either so we need a central point to before we promise them that there's a spot here okay um J just for clarification, I thought it was approved in the board minutes and meetings when we did this the last time. So just, yeah, okay. Um, great. Uh, so if anybody has any suggestions that uh, we could go forward and then um, just put some names out there, but those are two that I know um, that have a really good following. And- um, We've had and, Diane before. And, and have worked with the house before and, and she actually has pieces of on what she has created at the Callahan house itself um, and, 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 and done things. I think prior to you even being um, on the director that, as, a, as the director, Kathy, that's... that's yeah, she, um, she, the last time Diane was at the house, she actually did a, um, a live demonstration. Yeah. She sat on the porch and, and painted. And that's the type of thing she really likes to do. And, yeah. and um, that, that brings, um, she, and like I said, she's got a really good following. So um, she's elderly and I know that she still is very, very prolific and, um, <coughs> and does a lot of pieces and, and it would be out there to do that. Um, at this time, I don't know if uh, um, Leslie's available, but again, she has a really good following. Um, okay. So I had a couple of questions back to the manager's reports. Um, on the statistics, one of the things you were saying about counting um, and how hard that is to um, do because you're not always there. Um, I, I know from um, listening to various reports and stuff out there that um, certain um, inquiries like the, the um, rec departments and um, other state parks are now starting to track and do things through um, their social media accounts and tracking through photos. Um, is there um, photos and posts in which the Callahan has been added in? Is there a way that we can do that? Um, they also do things through the, um, tr by tracking like um, information through Fitbits and, and stuff like that. So um, the, the, just the thought that something we might with this new normal, I think we have to start thinking out of the box on in regards to how are we going to 
make sure that we're tracking and keeping these accurate. And I'm all into um, making sure that we're meeting the requirements of the, what the initial charter was, and that is as a donation to the women of Longmont. And we have to really be on top of that we're following that charter. And I understand that we do the weddings and whatnot, but it's really important that we meet the requirements of the charter. I mean, the Callahan house wasn't given just to be a wedding venue. So um, that was my other question for you is exactly how are you meeting and, um, and approaching clubs and women's groups to, to, to let them know how the, um, the, they can do the thing. And how are you also verifying that they're vaccinated? How, do you just do it on verbal confirmation or? So, so first of all, um, we're gonna let them self-police. So in other words, they're going to do whatever they need to do to confirm that they're vaccinated. We can't really do that. <clears throat> so we're gonna leave it to the clubs to determine if their members are vaccinated and then tell us if that's the case. Okay. <clears throat> um, the way, mostly the way we honor the charter is by doing the clubs and doing them very inexpensively. Um, okay. But we have also had um, a, an unofficial um, direction from the city um, that we not increase, substantially increase the number of clubs meeting in the, in the house. Um, when we lose a club, we can gain a club or two. Um, we've tried very hard to get them down to a couple days a week so that we can actually physically have private events so that we can afford to keep the doors open for the clubs. So we still have about the same number of clubs that we had when I came to the house 10 years ago. And um, when we lose a club or we, we ha basically have an opening for a club, and I often get approached um, by people to meet at the house. And so what we try to do is keep them into the same days and the same time frames, so that we don't have to staff the house multiple times for multiple clubs. So um, we don't actively advertise uh, because I think we would be overwhelmed and probably um, be booked from morning to night, seven days a week with clubs. And um, so, that's kind of been our approach um, per Karen Roney. And um, the, uh, the private events are actually how we support the house um, because the only funding that we get from the city are my salary and benefits and the uh, maintenance of the major items in the house and the um, maintenance of the garden. So everything else, even a paper clip, comes out of the proceeds from the events that we get paid for. Did I, did I answer your question? Kind of. So on city direction, you've been told not to have any more clubs than what was prior. Karen's wish was to not substantially increase the number of clubs that met at the house because we have to have a balance between the clubs meeting at the house and the private events, which is how we fund maintaining the house and keeping the house as a city asset. Okay. Um, but from prior reports that you've done, you said that our clubs, clubs are actually dropping um, some of the bridge clubs and other things due to the elderly and- um... Well, and we have clubs waiting behind them to take their spots. So one of our bridge clubs is probably going to go away <clears throat> and we have a stitching club that wants to meet meet. So we'll replace the bridge club with a stitching club. So there's a waiting list. Um, an informal one. Okay. So, so we pick and choose basically. No, no, there's no picking and choosing. That somebody approached me about meeting and they're going to start meeting soon. I haven't communicated with them because of COVID. I mean, we're, yeah. we've been kind of on hold. We're not going to add new clubs until we have a, a clear path forward in COVID. But I have a, a lady who approached me about her club meeting at the house 
And okay. as soon as we have a clear pathway forward through COVID, I will reach out to her again and figure out when they're going to meet. Okay. Kathy, I'm just trying to have a clarification in my mind exactly how it works, how people approach you to, to, to do the clubs and that there's only a set number. Okay. That's just, it's a, just a clear up on, on that. And I understand. Do they approach you or do they also approach through the city rec department? Usually it's directly to me. Okay. I, I don't think there's been any approaches through recreation. Has there, Sue Ellen? You know, any information that we get or request for Callahan House do get funneled to Kathy, um, whether it's from our generic rec support uh, email or um, a reach out to one of our staff. Um, so Kathy does get all the information that comes through recreation. Um, and even from the city manager's office, those will also come into her either through recreation or directly to her. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you for answering my questions. Um, are there, does anybody else have any other questions? Oh, uh, there, there is. I didn't address your um, statistics thing. Yeah. Um, I, I can't think of any meaningful way to, to do it with Fitbits or photos. The, the one idea that I've had, um, if we could figure out a way to do it, would be to put counters on the gates. Um, you know, that just ticked when people came in and went out. Um, but it looks like it's a very expensive solution, um, which may or may not be very reliable and which may or may not require external power. So that's been one of the things I've been kind of poking at um, on and off again. Um, I will go poke at it again because I, I would love to just put a, a counter on the gate. So when anybody came through the gate, it just counted heads. Because that would be a very, to me, that would be a very interesting statistic. And it would also be a good way to support um, the continuing funding of the garden um, through the parks department. So th that is something that I've contemplated. If anybody has any good ideas for how to do that, and I know we've talked about it before, <clears throat> I would welcome um, your input or your ideas. I was just trying to come up with some solution that's um technologically savvy and would not um require too much of your time does does that make sense that we can use it does. For grant purposes or anything like that in in which we could um further our cause so to speak i, I agree i'm concerned with the counter it might not be considered accurate because it, depending on if people can mess with it. I, I hear all your concerns in, in regards to that. But um, again, anything that would be proactive and positive to, to make sure that um, people are recognizing how, how treasured this is used, that's the, mm -hmm. that's the, we're all working for the same cause here. So thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Any other further questions? Um, seeing no hands, and I'm looking, as you can see, I got to get my glasses down there to make sure. Um, I, I guess I just need at this point a, a, a motion for approval of the um, manager's report. Can somebody make a motion, please? Anybody unmute and make a motion so we can move further on? I so move. Second. Wonderful. It's been moved and seconded um, by moved by Karen and seconded by um, I, I'm moved by Candy. Sorry, and seconded by Karen that we move further um, past going on to old business. So old business um, listed is the board members' business cards. I, I have them ready. Um, my question is: Would you like me to mail them to you, or do you just want to hold on? To, have me hold on to them until um, we actually have an in-person meeting. What are everybody's thoughts? Um, I'm fine with you holding on to them, I guess. Um, okay, um, Candy, you're on. I guess um, in the meantime, things we don't know when we'll be able to meet in person. It might be nice to have them. 
um, we could still be promoting, even though we're not meeting, be promoting the house with our business that's cards. Um, I don't know <laughs> if that's an expense we don't want to um, to go through. We could set a time that Kathy's at the house and stop by and grab them. We could do that too, or have either option available. Either you stop by and pick them up when Kathy's there and make arrangements, or you wait till the next meeting when we're all in person. Great suggestion. I like <coughs> candy of, of, of said it when Kathy letting us know when you're there and we could individually stop by and pick them up. I don't like the, the thought of having an added expense of mailing them. Um, it, it just seems we could stick our masks on and come in and, and just do a quick pop in and, and, and pick up the cards when it would be convenient for you. That's okay. my thought, but I don't know where everybody else is at. Besides, that way we could actually see you for just a nanosecond. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could come in and have a cup of tea. Yeah, I like it. All right, I will. Um, I will set something up on the calendar. Write myself a note so I don't forget because my uh, my memory banks are about a nanosecond big. <laughs> And I will uh, put a couple hours on the calendar in the next week or so when I'm going to be there and I will send you an invite. And then Thank for you. those of you who don't make it, I'll um, maybe set another one or maybe I'll break down and mail the one or two that are left. How's that? Sounds good. <clears throat> All you. right. And I'm going to yeah. send 10 each to start with, but I could print more as we need them. Does that work? Yes, I think okay. so. Thank you. All right. Okay, moving right along, grant update, and I guess that goes to you, Karen, if, um, if, if you wouldn't mind, please, updating us on that. Yes, we have some news to, to update you with. After our January meeting, we received notice on January 21st that the new State Historical Fund Guidebook was coming. And on February 1st, we received that new guidebook, 60 pages. And so the process to apply for the grant has changed a bit. And we've learned that looking through the new guidebook, we're now required to complete a letter of intent and submit that first. So our Direction changed a little bit and we began to focus on preparing the letter of intent. And so that is almost complete. We just have some fine tuning to do to that. And then it will be ready for uh, submission. But we are also waiting for um, contractors to get back to us, as Kathy mentioned, with their bids. Um, and so that, that holds up any further work on the application itself until we actually can get those in. Um, but if you all are all interested, it would be wonderful to share with you the letter of intent uh, so that you can all read it and provide any feedback. Um, and... Um, and before, we, of course, before we would submit it. That is our, I guess, latest overall update about grant writing. Does anyone have, does anyone have any questions about that? I know, I know in the past, um, I believe it was Candy and was it you, Janet? And I apologize if I'm getting muddled, but um, that we'd like to see the grant. And the other thing is um, uh, from speaking with a couple of um, people on city council and other community members, it's my understanding that we can all um, work on the grant if we choose to, um, that the Sunshine Laws do not sit on that simply because we're not discussing board policy or anything in regards to that. 
so we can work on the grant and each of us could um, have input um, uh, if we chose to do so. So I wanna do a clarification that um, any of the outside um, items, including Art Walk and whatnot, we can all work on um, long as we're not discussing board policy. So um, That's good. clarification. So if anybody else would like to help Anne and Karen who have, again, I want to thank you guys for taking this on. Um, it's, it's really important work and um, that's kind of where I'm at. So Connie, what, what, what do you thought? I saw that you unmiked. I forget. <laughs> Let me think. <clears throat> I was writing some notes and then I forgot. I'll unmic and figure it out. Okay. Any other comments? Um, I think me personally, I would love to be able to see the letter um, and, and, and go. I think everybody, a fresh pair of eyes on anything is, is always good. Um, personally, that's the way I, I like to work. Not, I know that not everybody does, but okay, Connie, you're back. I realized, um, Karen Cruz, could you um, send us a copy on email as a document? Yeah. Okay. That would be great. Just to have some of the notes and then that, that letter of intent um, probably is, to, is it just one page long or something like that? It's three pages. Three pages. Okay. Pages. So, so if, I'm happy to send the guidebook to all of you. <laughs> it's a PDF. You can dive right into that 60 pager <clears throat> and I'll include the, the letter of intent. And of course, like I mentioned, uh, it's open for all of you ladies to, to take a look at and provide your feedback and your input. I sure welcome it and encourage it. This has never been a closed process. This is not exclusive. Uh, and, and I want to make sure that that's really clear. It never has been. So everyone's always been welcome to be part of this. Thank, Thank you. you. I would love to see the PDF too. I don't want to kill any trees. So, so if we could keep it down to a, a format that we could look at and take take several breaks in between the 60 pages <laughs> that, that we can verify stuff, that would be great. And um, again, if you can think of anything that we can do to help, um, that would be outstanding. Anybody else have any comments in regards to the, the grant? Well, well I, I appreciate the clarification on the sunshine rules because we, we have been trying to um, work around that by only having two board members in any meeting. So I, I really appreciate that clarification because honestly, that's what we've done in the past. When we worked on Art Walk, when we worked on the Ice Cream Social, when we had working sessions, we've always had more than two board members or typically had more than two board members. And I hated to think that we've been in violation all these years of the rules. I agree. And I, and I was kind of thrown up my hands. So I said, well, how do we do this? How do we set up Christmas decorations with two people? I mean, how do we do this? It right. doesn't sense it, it just we're, well, we need a clear guideline on well of course that doesn't meet the, the as long as we are, we do not discuss board policy and if any board policy is brought up we stop one another and say that's not proper to discuss at this time simple clear elegant to the point great <laughs> going good oh, that makes our life easier so I, I'm, I'm thrilled with that so um, if nobody else has any other things and want to make sure, um, I'm looking at each square to make sure I'm not missing anything, um, and in regards to the grant update, I'm going to move on, um, on to new business. Uh, oh, Kathy, you can take the electronic participation policy for boards. Um, each of you should have this in your packet. Um, all this is, and you can you can read it if it if it makes you feel better. But all it is is um, a policy that allows us to that sets the guidelines and allows us to agree that we're going to meet the way we're meeting today um, to have virtual meetings because there was no policy for virtual meetings um, 
from it, on the city's part. So all they did was put together um, the rules about how we're going to do that and how we contact the participants and how we, um, you know, that it's allowable for voting and um, emergency situations. And um, so it just kind of lays out the acceptable way in which we're going to do what we're doing today. So um, they would like, they wanted us to present it to you. And they also wanted us to um, vote that we were willing to do business in, in this manner. So Okay. So we need to have a motion on this then. You said that they wanted us, <coughs> who yes. was this that wanted this? The city manager wants to have us a vote on that. Yes, please. We as a committee will be following these rules and recommendations. Okay. Yes, um, and then we're willing to operate via these policies. Okay. So under that guys, I'm going to need a motion from somebody on the board that we accept this um, policy of board and commission meetings. Anybody? I make I a motion. So move. <laughs> okay, Connie, Connie beat you. So, so okay, good. <laughs> so, so can, can you take second? Second. <laughs> okay, so it has been moved by Connie Newman and seconded by Can Candy that uh, Candace that the the, the um, board commission meeting and policy has been approved by the Callahan House Board. All right, um, moving right along. COVID update of clubs and events. Um, Do we need to vote, Maureen? Oh yes, I apologize. Thank you. <laughs> Clarification. Um, Sorry, if we could have a vote and then I'll see a show of hands that we, it's been uh, approved uh, for the, the motion that's on the floor. I like the waving hands. <laughs> okay. okay, wonderful. So everybody ha has, I, um, uh, is, it's been move forward. I don't see any nays at, the, at this point. So it's been moved and seconded and uh, a vote has been taken that we approve of the board and commission meeting. Thank you very much for the clarification. Appreciate it. Um, moving on at this point um, for the COVID update for clubs and events. Um, Kathy, I know you covered this in your report, but we're, I'm going to go right back to you. So we have a clear uh, you know, I don't, I don't really have anything to add. Um, I, like I said, I think we can do 15 to 20 inside <clears throat> and up to 75 outside. Um, and I'm hoping that as we move to blue, that that number is going to increase because I have a couple of events that are higher than that um, later in the summer in August and September. And um, I'm really, and, and I have a bride's mother that's pinging me every 10 days asking me to promise her that she can have her wedding for 100 in August for her daughter. And I keep telling her, I think it's going to work out, but obviously I can't promise. <laughs> so, um, but she's, she's, she's got, she's got it on her calendar. I think every 10 days, Kathy, Kathy, what's the news? So um, I, I'm hoping that things are going to change enough that we can have our events um, up to full capacity um, by July or August and that um, we won't have to wear masks and that everybody can go back to celebrating in the way that they want to. I agree. I hope everybody's getting their vaccines. I know I have. So <sighs> yeah, I have two. So. I know Karen has. Yeah. So everybody got their vaccine. Yay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I think the other thing, uh, and I will confirm this, but I think the other thing is um, if everybody's been vaccinated, we can probably go back to in-person meetings. Uh, but I will confirm that because every time I thought we might be able to do that, um, it, um, I've been told we're not doing that yet. So I will, I will ask the question. Okay, that's, that's yes. wonderful. Because I would love to see your smiling faces in person at the house, drinking coffee and tea and, and eating, eating a donut or a pastry. Yeah, that'd be great. And I wouldn't have my puppies popping up every two. Do you see their little heads? <laughs> <down>? <laughs> I apologize about that. So it's um, fine. My dog, my dogs actually bark at me. If it gets to be 4 30 and I'm on one of these meetings, um, they start barking at me because it's almost time to walk and they don't want me to forget. Of course <laughs> not. Of course not. Oh. All right. So um moving on. 
to Art Walk update, and we've kind of been jumping around, and I do apologize about this. So, Art Walk update, and um, Kathy, you covered this also in your manager's report. Too. I did. And do you have anything you want to add about how you want to handle it? Because we kind of skimmed over that. I guess we'll put um, Ann, Ann Thompson, if she is willing to be point person on this, um, I think that'd be outstanding. And um, if you're willing to um, look into and, and um, be speaking exactly um, and, and coordinate with Kathy on how we're, we're approaching the um, firehouse in regards to this. Um, who's, who's the new director over at the firehouse, Kathy? Um, her name's Elaine. I can tell you her last name. I have an email from her. I can never remember it. Uh, if I can find it. Um, so, Anne, do you want to just take a minute and um, for Maureen and Karen Reed to talk about how we've done Art Walk in the past and how we solicit artists and how we how we do that? Because I don't I don't think we've ever actually gone through that. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I first came on, I think Shirley was doing it first and then she had to leave because of medical reasons uh, from coordinating it. So I did volunteer to coordinate it for the last couple of years. Um, basically, everybody's invited to recommend an artist. Um, we kind of look through what they can do. Um, we can only have four or five is about the max. If you get too many, I know they used to pack a lot in, but it's just too crowded. And um, so we just want to make sure we have a variety and we don't want, that's why we want a central point. So recommend an artist. That's wonderful. That helps a lot. To, um, so I can talk to them and then, uh, we'll just decide, you know, maybe we'll have a couple, uh, watercolor artists, a couple jewelry people, you know, we want a little bit of a mix. Um, we've had several interesting things. We had a lady who made uh, decorative soap one time. Uh, we had a lady who made whirly gigs for the backyard, <laughs> for the front yard. So we, you know, we're very open to different <laughs> kinds of art. Uh, but we, that's the reason I say, don't just go out and ask somebody right away and say, yeah, you can come. We need to know how many we have. And we just want to make sure uh, that everybody has an acceptable type of art. We don't want anything controversial, political, anything like that. I Nude. <laughs> Nude. No nudes. I, I, Sorry, guys. I, I believe <laughs> the last when we were discussing we were talking about possibly putting forth a theme and that's why we were doing a theme with the dresses and trying to keep up in the regards to a theme of fashion before this whole combine. right been <laughs> so were you thinking on those, those lines that we might follow a theme this um, year i'd really have to talk to jacqueline and see if she, if the, I don't even know if they did the paper dresses this year. That was a group down in Denver that did that. Um, they were beautiful and it would have been, you know, maybe we'll still be able to do it. I don't, I doubt that this fall that would come together, but maybe in a future year we could get that put together. Um, there's quite a bit of logistics involved in that. So for, I mean, actually I'd love to just maybe offline or have some email chats with several people, but, um, once we know for sure we are going to be in this fall, uh, we could talk about that. So I don't know. Um, personally, I, I just think we move forward and just do a smaller, maybe not take on so so much of a chunk, <laughs> and and forget. Well, the that's thing. I, yeah. I think this fall will be rather a, a simple, you know, art walk. Um, the other thing I just have a concern about is if we're going to have the artists in the house. How much spacing do we need? I mean, I know sometimes it gets rather crowded uh, with people bumping, you know, shoulder to shoulder almost through the house. So we obviously don't want to have it that crowded. Um, so I don't it's know. It's going to Yeah, COVID. I'd sure like to know what, yeah. how many people we can have in the house at a time to even do this. You know, is it I, is, is it going to have to be like what we've done in the house in the past with tours, where one of us is on one side and we only let a certain number through at a time and then we kind of monitor it that way i I, I think it's too early to to guess okay okay i you know and honestly if we can't have a significant number of people through in four hours it may not be worth doing yeah. so we, we just 
Yeah. We're going to have to wait. Right. The fall one, the uh, September one is always my favorite because so far anyway, in my experience, the weather has been better mm -hmm. and uh, we've had, you know, the band on the deck, I don't, or on the porch. I don't know if that would be a possibility, but there is a possibility. Maybe we could put some of the artists in the yard if we wanted to look into that. So the crowds wouldn't be so packed together in the house. Um, those are things we can discuss and see if they're doable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that all, oh, that sounds great. And I like the thumbs up, Karen. I, I, I do. <laughs> thumbs up, Connie. Great. The, that's great. Um, I, I think you're right on. The, 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 unfortunately, it is Colorado. We can't always depend on the weather and, and we can always hope. I, I think um, <laughs> September we're, we're better off in the fall, I agree. So, okay, thank you, and for taking that on, and, and we'll look forward to future updates. Okay, so. Um, Maureen, in answer to your other question, the executive director of the Firehouse Arts Center is uh, Elaine Waterman. Thank you. I know that she's <clears throat> relatively new, and um, so great, great, thanks. Um, we'll go from there. Um, on to marketing and social media. Okay, so <laughs> I know that um, Kathy sent out this marketing and social media discussion. These are all just um, suggestions and thoughts of, of things of, of, that were already racing through my mind on this new normal, on how we're going to meet our um, requirements so it, as as we are, and again, this new normal, it's, its I don't think it's going anywhere to a certain degree. Um, I'm hoping that we can get back together and meet in person. I think that's gonna happen, but there are other things that we need to be looking at. Um, as far as, in the past, I also spoke about the Rocky Mountain PBS. I contacted Rocky Mountain PBS and I contacted um, their broadcasting person and and i apologize i don't have their name directly in front of me but i will get back to you on that um they were very interested in doing something with a with um putting a film on with the callahan interesting enough they need two years in advance to do any film um and putting forth an item so rather than look at that as a negative i look at it as positive that we can possibly look, we have an existing film, great, but it's outdated. And I think it'd be great to look at maybe contacting either a student or some other local filmmaker that we could come in and approach doing a new film um, based on the Callahan and getting just some updated um, in there, we wanted to make sure, at least in my point, that we're reaching and continue to reach the, um, a, uh, the younger population as well that are much more technology savvy than myself as one. But, um, but I, I want to make sure that we're um, continuing to be um, prevalent. And um, I think it's important. So those are some of my thoughts. And if you guys have any, I, I asked for um, some information from Kathy to make sure that we are following all the discussions and everything that we need to do for our social media outreach and whatnot through the city. And I asked for um, any documentation that they have or policies in regards to that. Um, because moving forth, this being a, a two-year process, um, we have to make sure that we're passing this through and everybody's, we're meeting all approval requirements and we're not stepping on anybody's toes. Um, again, I look at it as an opportunity to get the information about um, the Callahan's, Mrs. Callahan's generous donation to the women of Longmont and what a great jewel this is for us. And um, and if we could get on the Colorado experience and, and they were very interested because we have such prevalent history and it is also supported by um, one of its main sponsors underneath is the Colorado Historic Fund. So this would also be um, a great opportunity to prove 
to them that um, they want to continue to support us with grants because we are making our, getting out there and making ourselves prevalent to the community. Um, one of the things I was looking at doing is um, in a side note, making a graphic on how the uh, Callahan house um, or the Callahan family influenced the city of Longmont itself and by supporting who they did. And then, and then there's the other thing, um, Zoom virtual tours. I know by visiting other historic sites and going out there because I'm, as I was sharing with Karen earlier, um, I'm a, I love to travel and I love to go and do things and I love to experience local cultural and history. And if you touch on other historic buildings, they have Zoom tours that they can go in and somebody's on the other end um, and will explain or go through the house. Maybe it's something that we should look at doing that um, we do with the Callahan house where we can have um, a Zoom tour or informational post on a media approach. Um, again, with clarification of how this goes through the city of Longmont and how, how we can do this. Um, I think we're missing an opportunity here. This would also give us an opportunity to reach out to schools and have classrooms um, do a, a tour um, via um, social media. This is something that I think we're lacking in. And, and I'm not gonna say I'm an expert on this in any way, shape or form. I am definitely not. I am um, just putting out ideas out there too. It was so sad when I heard that um, the Colorado um, Frontier Days in, uh, um, the, with the Pioneer classes um, down at Pioneer the- days. Park. Pioneer Days. Pioneer, Pioneer Days, days. thank you, uh, um, were, were canceled. And I was trying to think, okay, if it were my kids, how would I would be trying to fill that in? and. And I think we're missing an opportunity here. I would like to hear everybody else's thoughts. Candace? So um, the uh, Historical Society is doing virtual tours this year for Pioneer Days. So um, that obviously was a need they felt needed to be filled too. So that's being done. Um, and hopefully by next year, we'll be able to return to in live presentations. Mm -hmm. um, my suggestion might be that because we do already have a film that exists, is there a possibility of putting that film on uh, the city website or whatever so that, or maybe even through the Longmont Museum so mm -hmm. that that film is available to anybody who'd like to see it rather than reinvent the wheel and refilm, we've got it at our hands already, we've done it. So just make it accessible to people um, and maybe to classrooms too. Um, I approached the Historical Society about doing the virtual tours of Callahan at the same time as the park, but no, no it, 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 they don't want it, they want it separate. They want it separate. However, Elise is more than willing to promote Callahan House in any of her contacts with the schools. And because this is different, because it's not like we've traditionally done, that would have to be thought about how we're going to go about it. Because in the past, why, you know, you send out a letter to the teachers or an email or whatever, and you could say, by the way, Callahan House would be willing to set up tours for you, contact Kathy, blah, 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 blah. Um, with the virtual tours, it's a little different, but they're willing to help promote, but not be, not put them together. We don't want, they don't want the, the distinction to go them. away. Right, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, so anyway, that's, that's that. Um, but yeah, I think we should take a look at what we've already got and make that available, first of all. And then if we want to film a new one for the PBS, whatever, in, the, in that two-year span, that's great. But history is history. I mean, 
doesn't things change. aren't going to change that much from what we've already done <laughs> to <laughs> something new other than updating on what the house might be used for or that type of thing that's modern history we've done the historical stuff already so it's not like we're so outdated that nobody's going to gain anything from it so two, two things the the video is available it's on the city of longmont youtube channel okay. it's been there for quite some time um, i googled it it came right up um, so it is absolutely available um, okay. what i would like to see is um i would love to do a new intro um or or maybe just cut out um the original intro and just cut straight to the history stuff and the mm -hmm. actual virtual tour of the house. Um, Karen? I can say that I can gather a student volunteer who is gifted in those types of things to be able to do that kind of film work so that we're not having to have an expense tied to, um, to that update. That's well, exactly what I'm looking for. Somebody that understands the technology, is capable of doing it, could possibly use it as a student project, um, that type of thing. And again, I wasn't wanting to recreate the whole wheel. Um, I agree, history is history. But um, the manager from PBS said that um, we have to have clear rights to the film and that um possible updating or adding to um the film was what what would be required in order to um, put it forth um for broadcast with them and that's well, exactly where i'm at well and that's the, that and that is a question because it was produced um by eyes on long Lunch, and they may very well if we wanted an update be the ones who want to do that Mm. Um, but the other piece of information is we don't have the original um, film stuff that they did. Um, they, they did not keep it. Last time I asked if it still existed, I was told they didn't know where it was at. Um, mm. So we would have to, if we wanted to change it, then we would have to circle back with eyes on Longmont and get permission, at which point they might want to be the ones who actually did the updates, if that's even a possibility. Um, and in seconding what Karen said, I, um, I also have a, uh, a friend who's been a professional um, video videographer and worked at a TV station who has a sound studio and a recording studio that we, we could maybe use. I haven't talked to him yet. Hmm. So the first step would be actually speaking to Eyes on Longmont. And hmm. the second step would be trying to figure out if we can find what, A, what we want to do to it and B, who would we have to do something like that. But I think the history portion and the actual virtual tour that Connie narrated are still very appropriate. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Maureen, I think the PBS, or the Rocky Mountain PBS is an awesome idea. I think that would be really cool to, to get that on there. <clears throat> I'd like to understand what that would consist of, what you actually talk to them about. Um, and, and the other thing I want to add is it took us almost a year and a half to produce that last video and it was a lot of work mm -hmm. um so we if we're going to do something then we have to be willing to commit to that work i can't take it all on by myself right oh, absolutely not and and um this is why part of the reason i wanted to bring up because i knew between the collective group there would be somebody that knows people or or knows of a possibility of how we can this and um it's just asking the right question and going forth mm -hmm. connie you have a comment yeah i had a couple of comments i had worked on that dvd and film in 2013 and um the eyes on longmont would have the copyright on that and mm -hmm. unfortunately rich has passed away but there are still committee people that were on that committee i'd have to look up all my notes to remember their names but it was really a project out of the senior center and yes. they used the used the comcast studio here over at um well the old carnegie building channel eight. Channel, channel eight channel eight studio yeah. yeah i think it was channel three at the time but whatever and um 
things, but that those that film it was a huge undertaking in getting to the uh, Colorado Experience piece. I know they have a real standard format of how they do that, mm-hmm. and they could possibly use excerpts, you know, from the film, but they have a kind of a standard narration of how they do their projects. That's exactly right. I watch that, you know, all the time. Um, The other thing that I was going to add is as far as a new marketing thing is it's been a long time since we've had an article in the Times Call. And I thought with the 150th there again, this is a major opportunity they've been doing a 150th article every week you know a little feature it's mostly from eric and the archives but it's still very interesting so i know that eric would be you know happy to put that forth or um go ahead and get our um we can go ahead and i don't know who to contact at the times call but that would be a great way to get a feature again the sad uh, thing is they're doing it one a month. One it's a like, month? It's one a week? Yeah, one a month. Oh, my goodness. They're well, missing a big to, opportunity. In, yeah, yeah, it's big. Uh, yeah, I, I would wonder who we could contact and maybe do something over a weekend or uh, one a month. That's terrible. I'm sorry. That's well. I will, I'd be happy to go ahead and contact the Times Call and I could talk to Eric too and see how, who's handling what and just get our name out there and say, we, you know, it'd be great to have another, have an article because it's, I'm sure it's been at least 10 years since long the Callahan House has been featured as far as front cover kind of history feature. And that's exactly uh, what I'm talking about. Okay. I, I, this whole COVID thing. So it is. It's so disappointing because we were, this should be a huge celebration for the whole city and everybody should right. be getting mm-hmm. out there and doing this yeah. stuff. And just, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sue, yeah. Allen, Sue Allen's got her hand up. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to let you know, um, Recreation is doing 150 things to do in Longmont with 50 things for the spring, right. 50 things for the summer, and 50 things for the fall. And, and uh, Kellyanne House is part of that. Um, so there is there are, there are some efforts to tie in Callahan for some ways to to check off um, if someone is that interested <laughs> of doing mm-hmm. the hundred fifty things. You know, mm-hmm. we are tying some of that back into Callahan House as well. So in, in Candace, to let you know that that there is some stuff out there tying it in. Thank, thank you, Sue. I appreciate it, Candace. You had your hand up. Well, to piggyback on that, I sent emails to all of you about the uh, woman's work fundraiser scavenger hunt that starts the 16th through the 25th so that is tying in with the 150th anniversary of Longmont and Callahan is one of our scavenger hunt stops and Kathy provided me with flyers that will be in each of the tote bags that everybody gets for this hunt that explains in more detail about Callahan House. Because even though they'll just be going there and reading the QR code, hopefully there'll be new people and they haven't seen the gardens before and they'll meander through the gardens and open this little brochure and find out the information they need. So it's a way of promoting Callahan House and, and making sure it was included in this small little celebration of the 150th anniversary. So I encourage all of you to help us promote that, if you would, um, by a, by attending or inviting friends to go on a scavenger hunt with you. I've already been speaking with my in-laws and oh. my my parents and, and, and getting everybody signed up to do that. I think it's just great. Um, and thank you cool. for making sure that the Callahan House was included. That's just mm-hmm. that's great. So... I've got a really hot <laughs> dog at the moment. Um, moving right along, that's basically where I'm at. And um, it's good to know, Connie, if you, I will, in my, my notes, I'm going to say that um, you're going to contact um, the, the, the Times Call in regards to having us do something for 150. And that's great. In the meantime, um, 
I will get more information, uh, detailed information, exactly um, what they would like to see in what format and whatnot. But because of they're looking at the different formats, that's why it looks like we will have to refilm it um, from what I believe his name was Thomas was telling me. Um, that is, that's unfortunately the case. And then if we, on a side note, if we do it this way and we take on this project, then we can have something that we can work and uh, use for and in any way choose we see fit as um, the uh, Callahan House Board um, to be used from the future. And we aren't gonna be working with um, dealing with who's got the rights to what and do we have the right to use this and and in that and because um you had shared that rich had passed away that's the real clincher and if he was the one that was really instrumental in doing that it's a lot of muddy water and i i think we'd be better off looking at um getting something together that we out and out as a as the Callahan House owns, that's just my thought. Um, yeah, I I will say with Rich, you know, he was the instigator, but he was he's not the owner of that copyright. It's the it's the, um, it's the Eyes on Longmont. Yeah, the senior center or the Eyes on Longmont, and I don't even know whether they're still in existence or not. So how that's handled? Okay. They are. They're still around. Although, I, just like every other group, they're not meeting because of COVID. Right. Right. Okay. Is again, do we want to muddy the waters and and just use what we can from them and see if they're willing to share it with us? And then, if we can get a clarification, if we could have partial. <laughs> I mean, they gave they gave us the rights to use it. They did. Um, it, yeah, they did it for us. Um, but the, the issue isn't using it. The issue is changing it. So we need to circle back with them. I mean, they gave us the rights to use it. They did it specifically for us and, and working with us. So we've been, we've been using it. We show it at every open house. It's posted on the City of Longmont website. It's I, just, I, can we get the permission to change it? That's exactly it. We need to have yeah. the permission rights to, in order to change it. And that's the clarification. So do we know who's, who's running that at this point? No, but we can find out. Okay. Is anybody willing to take that on? Because I don't. It's on my list already. Okay. Are you sure you're okay with that, Kathy? Because I don't want to add one more thing to your, your list. Um, also uh, you know, I'm probably going to have to go to Michelle Waite and um, figure Absolutely. out who's in the group. So let me take care of that. That's kind of, um, I'll, I'll track down who it is and then we can figure out how to approach them. Connie, I saw a hand. Yeah, just Kathy, get, count me in. I can help do any footwork while I'm in town. So that'll be great. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Connie. Thank you, Connie. appreciate it. And because it's your voice on it too. And it's so Nice. So, <laughs> that's a that's a nice thing. Side note, side note. So, so that covers everything on marketing and social media for me. And if anybody else has any other inputs that they would like to add to that, um, again, I do think it's it's something that we just because you can Google the, the, the YouTube video doesn't mean other people know how to do that or reach that. Right. If, if we could make it prevalent so that they can do that virtual tour, that'd be great. And again, if we can do, um, have a student or whatnot, do a better intro or, or, or bring it in, into a better thing, that would be great. Um, so I think we've got a plan at least. That's that's good to know. Um, other business. Does anybody else have any other business at this time that we need to discuss? No. I mean, short of me getting it up and throwing a frisbee, that's really on my next slide. <laughs> that's what the, the 
hope he's having an issue with. So um, future agenda items of donations for um, preservation. I just, I just wanted to not lose track of that. Um, as we go forward with fundraising for the for the grant cash match and that kind of stuff, that we um, at some point we need to figure out how to go about doing that. Um, I don't think it's a today thing. I think it's a down the road thing. So I just left it on there so we didn't lose it. Okay. On that note, I did want to just add a little thing. So donation wise, do we have any place on? Um, the web page itself of, of where the Callahan is, where they can do a um, donation um, for the Callahan specifically, um, either through RevTrack or, or something along those lines where they could literally just go, I'd like to donate. Would you like to donate to the Callahan House for preservation or whatever else? Is there, somebody could just donate online and it, we could do it through RevTrack and, and, and do like a $25 donation or whatever, something along those lines. Just the well, thought. Can we even do that? Okay. That's my, that's my point. I think that's a doable thing. Um, and we, we talked that we can't have a donation box outside of, of the building itself, but we could have a QR code or something that people could put their, say, okay, and this goes to is it possible that we could do a QR code and when people could donate and it goes through rev track and we could track it that way? Is that's a thought? Where if people are using the gardens, do it help help support um, the, the keep the upkeep of the Callahan House and we have a QR code where people get their phones out and they can just do a quick donation and we can go through rev track. Is it, that a possibility? I think. People are doing it somehow. We just have to, we have to figure out how to do it and, and um, run it through. It's gotta go through the rec department because that's how we're following. But surely there's a way that we could put a QR code on that somewhere. If we can't put out a donation box itself, we could certainly post a little plaque with a, a QR code that would do a donation. Um, just thought and I know we can't go into great depth right now but we should have that on the next agenda um, to, to see how we can do this to make sure that we're relevant and, and again it would also help us keep count if people are donating even if it's in incremental amounts of five dollars ten dollars here and there it's every bit helps and every bit goes towards the house and that's important so any other thoughts that people want to add to donations for preservation that could be on future agenda? Okay. I'll talk to Sue Ellen and we can see if there's a way to do that. that that's a good idea. Okay. And anybody else can add any two cents before? Um, um, I do have one other uh, question, yeah. and that is, um, if we don't have any pressing business, do we want to have a monthly meeting, or shall we just have a meeting when things have changed enough that we can actually do something, and or there's pressing business? I'd like your I'd like your opinion. I mean, obviously, if we can have a meeting in person, that would be amazing, and we'll just do it. But if we're going to continue in this virtual format, and there's nothing new. At what frequency do we have want to have a meeting? Well, I think that's one of those things that we have to put to a vote. That that's a. I, I'd like to have a discussion first. True, true. About I, what people's desires are. I I, I agree, but but. Um, do we make it a bi-monthly meeting? What do we do? Janet, what's your thoughts? Well, I was thinking that Kathy would well know if there's more information that she needs to put out. She could kind of be the judge of that uh, to see if it's worthwhile to have a meeting. I, Karen Reed? A meeting for the sake of having a meeting seems kind of time a time waster for a lot of people the city for Kathy 
if, if Kathy knows we've got something that we need to discuss or just be updated on even, I think every other month is, is perfectly fine. I, I agree with that stance. I just, again, I'm a rule follower at, it's, it's one of my faults, call it, call it that, but I, I want to make sure that we're meeting our requirements. And if it's said anywhere that we are supposed to be meeting on a monthly basis, then we need to be, um, have a clarification of vote uh, and a vote on that matter. We can't just, uh, Sue Ellen? You know, just an observation that with the length of the time of this meeting, that if you're having a monthly meeting and it's less than an hour and everything's said and done, perhaps that would be a time to, to move forward in that concept. Um, it seems like there was a lot going on today. And, and you put proposals for future discussions that seem pretty um, that seem pretty timely and may require some thought. So I would meeting more regularly and for shorter duration is feels better than a three hour marathon every other every other month. Right, that makes sense. Um, there's also the issue that um, we have to have our meetings set and, and um, announced so people um, outside in the community can come and be part of that. If we're changing our meetings around, I'm afraid um, I don't want anything to come across as improper or um, that, again, we're meeting the requirements of what the city asks of us to do, even if it's a 20 or 30 minute meeting it's, it's, it's a 20 or 30 minute meeting and we would just go through our agenda quickly and in and, 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 and proper order and nothing else we get to see each other's smiling faces for 20 minutes once a month. Um, but trying to then um, make sure that it's uh, broadcast out there that this is when this meeting is held, this is how it's going to be. And if we cancel those, I understand there will be times where we have to cancel them. I've got that. Um, but uh, Anne Thompson, you've got your hand. Yeah, I just wanna say, I agree with uh, Sue Ellen. Um, I don't mind having a monthly meeting, but I would really like to have a more set time format. In other words, a hard stop, you know, if we go an hour and a half or so. Um, I think, you know, figure out what we can endure and then have a hard stop. So I can set aside, okay, I have a meeting tomorrow. It's going to be an hour, not, you know, I might, cause I have other things I do too. And, you know, other appointments and things. And I, it's hard if you don't know how long you're going to be at a meeting. I agree. I agree. If we could keep it to, to a, a hard stop um, and, and try to keep it under the 45 minute line, I agree. I agree with that completely. It is is not unusual for our meetings to go out between an hour and hour and a half. Okay, that's that's pretty normal um, when we have real business to conduct. So Wonderful. I typically schedule them from nine to ten thirty. The unfortunately the virtual meeting extends that a little bit because of the waiting room and letting people in. And okay, um, and if it's less than that. It's less than that. So if we, we it, I don't know. I, I just think that. And you get back time. Yeah, we do. So unfortunately, unless unless it's gonna come up where, where people are gonna be out of town and there, no board members will be here. And, and I have been on other commissions where we've looked at like July, the July meeting and everybody's gonna be gone that week or, or the Christmas, you know, but we do the, the Christmas celebrations and try to get the Christmas ornaments up and, and whatnot in the calendar now. So I'm not sure how we want to approach the, that on that level. But if, if anything, I, I think we need to make sure that it's clearly stated and out there way in advance um, if we're doing a cancellation. That's my thoughts. What are you guys, anybody else? Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess that's all the discussion that I can think of um, at, at this time. Um, 
Jen. I have a I have a question. Are we going to get flowers planted under the sign this spring? Yes, ma'am. Oh. Cool. Very cool. One way or another. Yes. Sure. Good. All right. Um, we, we have a water issue. I don't think um, we're going to have any trouble resolving that. And it may just mean we need to hand water, but we'll figure it out. I haven't uh, talked talk to Anastasia about what we're doing yet, but yes, we're going to get it planted. Cool. I would hate for you to hand water that. It, it gets water from the grass. Okay, good. Good. Okay. Karen, I see your hand up. We have the proposed plan that we did two years ago when we planted, when we, when we put the sign in. So we have the proposed planting um, uh, of what would go in. Um, and I can arrange for volunteers to come and help to plant if we need. So, but uh, yeah, we can. If, we we do, if, if we're gonna go with a perennial plan and then put annuals in the front for color, then uh, all we really have to do is buy the plants and Anastasia and her crew can do the actual planting unless somebody really wants to dig. Okay, on, on that note, I think that's a great way to end guys. So flowers in the sign, that's uh, personally, that's, that's, that's a good thing. I think this has been a great meeting. Um, and I guess at this point I will take um, a motion on adjournment. I move that we adjourn the meeting. I thank, second. Thank you both Janet and Anne, Anne for doing that. I appreciate it. Um, thanks guys. Um, it's been great to see your fa smiling faces um, via Zoom, if nothing else. Um, I look forward to when we can all meet in person again and have coffee and tea at the house itself. Um, that would be amazing. Um, as you can see, I think that we're all a little weary of of this whole thing. Um, <laughs> I'm willing to meet mask and all if we have to. <laughs> I just honestly, it's it's just one of those things. So, okay. Um, thank you. That's what we got. Thanks. Thank thanks thank everyone. You. Appreciate it. Good to see y'all. Everybody have a good week. You Go scavenger hunting. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> so excited. <laughs>